Hey, this is Mr. Aiden from MrAiden.com, and this is Unit 6 Thermodynamics Part 2. And this will be calculating enthalpy by calorimetry. Uh, this is an important topic within thermodynamics and has become increasingly more popular over the last few years. So uh, make sure you pay attention to this one. It's going to be a hot one. So calorimetry. When we take a look at our equation sheet, we have one equation that just yells out calorimetry or bomb calorimetry or some sort of uh, uh, caloric experiment which is Q equals MC change in T. Q equals MC change in T. And what does this mean? Well Q is heat and M is mass in grams. Uh, C is specific heat or specific heat capacity. And I'll talk about that in just one second. And of course the delta T is the change in the temperature. So we have heat is in joules, mass is in grams. Specific heat capacity is the capacity of a substance to absorb or release heat. And so that is in units of joules per gram per degree Celsius, or joules per gram degrees Kelvin. Actually, not degrees. Kelvin is not degrees. It'll just be joules per gram Kelvin. Because the change in temperature, whether we do degrees Celsius change in temperature or degrees Kelvin change in temperature, the change is the same. And so what specific heat capacity is, how much energy will a, a substance absorb or release heat dependent upon its mass and dependent upon how much change in the temperature. What you want to do with Q equals MC change in T is stay consistent, which means if you're finding the heat of a mixture, make sure you use the mass of the mixture, the specific heat of the mixture, which is usually water, because usually mixtures, especially aqueous mixtures, are usually all, uh, a, a large majority of it is water, and the change in temperature of the mixture. If you have the Q of the metal or the heat of a metal, make sure you use the mass of the metal, the specific heat of the metal, and the change in temperature of the metal. And of course, if you're just doing water, the heat of the water, you're using the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times the change in temperature of the water. And every single time at the end of it, every time, you're going to find joules. But take those joules, write them down, and then divide by 1,000, and then write down that that is the same energy in kilojoules because you're going to be able to use these numbers later on as you're going to see. Uh, so l let me show you a problem here. Here we have a substance, we have uh, 200 grams of water, we have a thermometer in there, we have methanol, it's burning and of course the water is going to absorb the heat from the methanol. And so what you want to do in these experiments is uh, they might ask you what do you have to measure? Okay, now keep in mind measurements are different than calculations. Uh, what do you have to measure? You need to measure the mass of the water. You need to measure the initial temperature of the water and the final temperature of the water. Please don't say you got to measure the change in temperature of the water. That's not a measurement, that's a calculation. You have to measure these things about the water, the mass of the water, the initial and final temperatures of the water. Okay, what else do you need to measure? You need to measure the initial mass of the methanol and the final mass of methanol, not the change in the mass, that's a calculation. You're going to do the initial mass of the water, or sorry, the methanol, and the final mass of the methanol. So what are you going to do in your calculation? Well, you're going to calculate the heat that the water is absorbing, which means you're going to take the mass of the water times the specific heat capacity of the water, which is 4.18 or 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. This is always the specific heat of liquid water times the change in temperature of the water. And that gives you the heat. Now, what you want to do with the methanol is take the mass of the methanol. Now you got to calculate the change in the mass of the methanol, uh, which is subtracting these two. And then you're going to divide by the molar mass of the methanol, and that gives you the moles of the methanol. Now at the end of the day, because we have a conservation of energy, the heat that the water absorbed is the same exact heat that the methanol gave off. And at the end of the day, you take that heat, that Q, in kilojoules of the methanol, which is the same as the water if all the heat is transferred, divided by the moles of the methanol, and that gives you the enthalpy, the delta H, of the methanol. And so that is uh, very similar to how we would do a calorimetry experiment. Now you could also do a different calorimetry experiment where we take uh, something like a, a piece of metal and we place it in, in water in a bomb calorimeter, a very insulated container, and we end up 
taking uh, taking a look at the heat that the water is absorbing, the heat that the metal is giving off, which should be the same because the heat transfer is the same. Um, but keep in mind the temperature change is very different because the two substances have very different specific heat capacities. Water has a really high specific heat capacity, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, which means it takes 4.18 joules of heat in order to take one gram of water and raise it up just one degree Celsius. Most metals are below one, which means like some sort of metals would maybe be like 0.6 or 0.5 joules per gram degree Celsius. And this is because metals are such good conductors of heat. Why are they good conductors of heat? Because they have such low specific heat capacities. And that's what I say right here is metals have very low specific heat capacity because of their ability to conduct heat or even vice versa. It's probably better to said vice versa is metals have a great ability to conduct heat because they have a very low specific heat capacity. Now the primary laboratory error in any calorimetry experiment is there's too low of delta H um, calculated in an experiment as opposed to the theoretical that should be given off because we lose heat. We lose heat to the surroundings and that is the main laboratory error. Now take a look here. We have a, a phase diagram of water. You can see water is ice when it's below zero degrees Celsius. You can see the, the water temperature stays the same when we're melting it or even when we're fusing it. And then as we change the temperature of liquid water, uh, you can see the specific heat capacity is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then, of course, you can see the red line there. It takes 2,261 joules of heat to take one gram and to vaporize it. And then steam has a different specific heat capacity. I hope you can see the when we are uh, at a phase like sol, liquid, or gas, we have, look at the units. It's joules per gram degree Celsius because the temperature is changing there. But when we are in our phase changes or when we have a physical change, you can see it's just joules per gram because there's no change in temperature. We're just breaking the intermolecular attractions. So you can see in this blue region here, uh, we're changing temperature, which comes from a change in the kinetic energy of the particles. But in this red region where the temperature is staying the same, we're changing the state of matter because there's a change of intermolecular forces of attraction between the particles. So I hope uh, calorimetry made sense. Make sure you understand calorimetry really, really, really well. And uh, that'll definitely head off a lot of problems in AP chemistry. Mr. Ayton, signing off.